Thank you, Mary, and, and a good morning from my side also. It's nice to see full house here, and nice to be in Vasa, actually. Um, so I have been working now for more than one year with this blue bioeconomy in the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry, closely with uh, Timo Halonen and other colleagues also, but, but uh, I think Timo is sort of a father of the blue bioeconomy in Finland. Um, here you can see the content of my presentation, firstly, background of course, and also the definition, the official definition, what we, uh, how the blue bioeconomy is defined. And then areas of business opportunities and also some examples and also conclusions. <clears throat> so background, the present government of Finland has launched actually several sort of key, so-called key projects. And one of those is advancing blue bioeconomy. And uh, altogether five million euros has been allocated as a seed money to that project during 2016 and 2019. There is a steering group with the five ministries and also funding organizations like Finnish Academy, Business Finland, Citra, ELU Center, and also Regional Council of Ostrobotnia. And the project started with the National Development Plan for Blue Bioeconomy 2025, and it was published in, uh, in uh, 2016. 2016, and it's, it's only in Finnish. And one task there in the plan was that we need also a research and competence agenda for blue bioeconomy, and it was actually published in July this year, and it can be found behind the links when you get the, this presentation. It is in uh, Finnish and it is also in Swedish. And actually that ha has been my sort of key project during last, last uh, autumn and winter. According to this national development plan, blue bioeconomy means business activities and value creation based on sustainable and smart use of renewable, re renewable aquatic resources and expertise associated with it. And the blue bioeconomy bio depends on good status of waters and achieving and maintaining this supports the de development and marketing of blue bioeconomy products and services. And here I have highlighted some, some sort of key words which describes what, what, this, what we think blue bioeconomy <coughs> is. You have also heard, uh, I suppose, blue growth. That's sort of even broader. It's, there is shipbuilding and whatever. But in our, our case, the, in this picture, figure, there is a lot of information, so perhaps needs some, some clarification. So water resources are the basis, but the, the business does it take that far? No. <clears throat> the business areas, what we think belongs to blue bioeconomy, it's, it's water management and technology, waste, wastewater treatment, for example, also, <laughs> energy production, water, wind and wave power, biomasses, heat, geothermal heat also, and also, of course, food production and solutions to improve the aquatic environment. We, there we can see, let's say, very potential business opportunities also. 
and of course tourism and, and recreations and, and also combinations of these, uh, these areas as we will actually there is a presentation concerning uh, wind, wind uh, power and, and food production later today and here we have global challenges and, and we think that with the research and, and uh, knowledge and skills we can uh, there is, we, we can find new resources and uh, new working practices, new services, products, business models and also better decision making. Uh, I will go a little bit closer now to some of the uh, bi uh, areas of, of these bis business opportunities. Um, it's clear that the water is very closely linked to, to the UN's sustainable development goals. And we think that this involves also growth opportunities in international markets for Finnish companies. It's, it's totally realistic, it happens already, but we need some boost. And uh, these business opportunities and research needs were analyzed actually through, uh, through these uh, SDG goals. And I don't have now time to go all, all of those in de depth, but I will um, give some examples this food goal and, and clean water and sanitation and also life below water. <clears throat> but um, first of all, during, for example, last winter when, when uh, autumn and winter when we had several workshops with companies and, and research and uh, variety of companies actually. Uh, it, it's clear that uh, nobody uh, can be uh, strong alone and so we agreed that Finland can offer competitive solutions to the world's challenges when public and private sectors engage in goal-oriented collaboration. And, uh, and what we, we, we mean public here, it's, it's of course authorities, research institutes, it's mean education and uh, research funding and if we have sort of common goals and, and put sort of forces together we can reach more. And, uh, what was also uh, obvious that we need also a new kind of test environments of businesses and public sector. And there are already examples which are under construction actually. In Mikkeli, the aim is to create test environment for new water processing technologies and in Lauka for new re recirculation aquaculture systems. I will tell a little bit more about Mikkeli later on. And in Varkaus, the aim is a new public-private partnership model to develop rust farming operations. And this farm is already operating and there are facilities also for research. <coughs> so uh, together we are more stronger. Then I will move on to business opportunities in sustainable food production. <clears throat> so, uh, as we know, demand of food it is estimated to increase even 50% by, by uh, 2030 globally. And uh, I think it's, and we think that it's, it's obvious that the oceans, seas, and also inland areas could and should be better used for for pro, uh, protein production and also harvesting. 
but at the same same time we have to respect all aspects of sustainability so this we have be have to be very wise but the, the, the after let's say when climate change it moves on and, and there will be less and less arable land. So oceans, oceans and, and seas, of course, they are more and more important in food production. So in Finland, it's, um, the situation is that the most of the fish we eat is imported. It's mostly mostly Norwegian salmon, and we have a huge gap in in our trade balance. And to fill this gap, there are five innovation programs ongoing at the moment, which are financed by the European Maritime and Fisheries Fund (EMFF). So, not this is not the government's key key project, but but financed by another instrument. And the aim is, for example, to find new innovations and achieve more value from, from aquaculture, fishing, fish processing, and also their site streams. And actually, there, there will be fish innovation days later this autumn, and the, the registration is open. So those who are interested to join, so you can then hear more about where these programs are. But there are also very good news at the moment. So troll and trap net fishing of Baltic herring and sprat got the MSC certi certificate in June. And it's a paradox actually in Finland, uh, or only very small percent, was it like 4% of uh, Baltic herring is used for, for human consum uh, consumption at the moment. So this, I think, is a good opportunity to increase that, the amount and value of, of uh, Baltic herring. And there are also good news from the fish farming side. Uh, aquaculture production at the moment, or, or 2017, was 15 million kilos. And here we can see a map where, where these red ones, the produ production has started in Varkaus, in Uusikaupunki, and, and in Åland Islands. These are these re recirculating aquaculture facilities, but as, as you can see, the returns are still negative. But hope, hopefully, of course, someday they are positive. And there are also um, uh, big production licenses given uh, in Haukipudas, one million kilo, Luvia, uh, 600,000 kilos, and Kustavi, 300,000 kilos. They are all offshore farms. And uh, when these uh, farms, farming sites are, are up and running, so hopefully that figure would be more like uh, 20, 22,000 tons. And it's, there's, let's say, market also here in Finland, as, as you heard, and, and, and of course could be also markets internationally. But what is clear also, it's very, very important that there is smooth operation of the whole value chain and including packing. And this, these nice packages uh, comes from, uh, from Varkaus. It's 170 grams of fresh rainbow trout there. Actually, I, also, I have also tasted it and they taste it very good. Another example, which I'm very happy about, there's the John Nurminen Foundation local fishing project which uh, aims to recycle a significant amount of nutrients from sea to land by fishing that targets cyprinid fish. 
and at the same time helps underused domestic fish find their way to plates of the fins. I have also tasted these ones and they are, they are actually very good. And there are, there are also other good examples where the whole value chain from fishermen to, to, to plates, it's, it's functioning already. Then I move on to business opportunities in clean water and sanitation. And so we need a fresh water is estimated to increase by 30% by 2030. And after very hot and dry summer, it's very easy to understand that water saving and water recycling solutions and also smart management of water resources, there's big potential in, in that and, and badly needed. And also technologies to remove truck residues and microplastics from wastewater, no water sanitation con concepts, just name some of them. But uh, there's really a big pos potential in, in this area and at the moment, I don't know if you have seen the news that there is a delegation led by, by Minister Jari Leppä, they are in South Africa at the moment. Very many food and, and also water companies there. And here case Mikkeli where a new wastewater treatment plan is under, con construct on co under construction at the moment and the objective is to create a new kind of circular economy environment both for businesses and also research and development activities relevant to the current waste management center. And, and one part of the plan is also to, that there is also a test bed where enterprises can test new solutions and technology in real operational, operational environment. And uh, let's say aim is that, that there will be most modern wastewater treatment plan, plants not only in Europe but, but also worldwide. So. Here I have some pictures where Minister of Agriculture and Forestry and other gentlemen, they are drinking wastewater. That's the goal. <laughs> and uh, cleaned wastewater, not, not the pure one. Yeah. <clears throat> but the, but the, the whole thing will be, will be um, built on the, on the ground in Mikkeli. And then I, the, the last example is business opportunities in healthy and diverse water environments, which is of course basis for all bioeconomy, blue bioeconomy businesses. And you know this pessimistic esti estimation that there will be more plastic in the oceans than fish by 2050. 50. And we, we think that there is big potential in, solu in solutions reducing eutrophication and also restoring rivers, lake and seabeds, litter harvesting, just name one, one of those. <coughs> and we have a case, case Baltic Sea, which has been in headlines the whole summer. So solutions are badly needed how to decrease nutrient loads into the Baltic Sea and also how to remove and reuse the existing nutrients. And there are very actually uh, interesting projects ongoing in that area. But in, uh, according to WWF, healthy Baltic Sea could provi provide 500,000 additional jobs. And, and that should be kept in mind that it's hopefully we will succeed to cure Baltic Sea. There has been news this summer also this, uh, uh, about this gypsum project and also pulp fever, Fe pulp fever, not fever. And so methods to improve the ability of soil to catch and bind nutrients have been de developed 
de develop it and de test it. It's not business yet, but of course there is potential of b business also in this area. But but this is how to bind and catch nut nutrients training in the Baltic Sea. But how to remove and reuse those? It's sort of resources also, not only a problem. That's a lot to do in that area. So conclusions. We believe that goals set for the blue bioeconomy cannot be obtained with the business as usual. So we, what we need is new mindset, new public-private partnerships and clusters of enterprises, new technology, new products, new services, all of those are needed. And uh, I think that it's, it's really realistic to have target to interna international markets, so solving, solving uh, sustainable development goals. And uh, doing this, it is possible also to do business in this area. And if you are interested, there is some more information uh, with this key project, Money. We have had also two open calls. And behind the link you can see the ongoing projects. They are related to internationalization of water sector, service concepts for blue tourism, utilization of nutrients and energy in water systems and projects related to digitalization will be selected this autumn. And you can find them behind the link later today. Later, later uh, in this autumn. And there will be a series of blocks from different sectors of the blue bioeconomy which will be published during autumn in biotalos.fi and they will, they will be mostly in Finnish. The next, uh, the first one will be will be uh, published, let's say, within a couple of weeks, and it will be aquaculture. Thank you very much.